Wednesday. Hey gang, how's it going? I was just, um, sorry I'm a bit late, I was just reading through all your nice messages. Hi everybody, hello New Zealand, happy morning and um, I'm glad you're enjoying the thumbnails. I sort of have to choose whether to do one um, in case it gives something away or whether it's okay to do one. Like with this one I was like, you know she's at the spa so that's okay. But I really enjoy the procrastination of choosing one when I should be doing a million other things. Um, so hi everybody, I hope everybody's okay. Shreya, you're all caught up. Yeah, Emma's a mess but Fiona, who saw that coming? Um, hi to Scotland and Em, it's first time listening. Hi! It's really nice, we all get a little chat as you story on a chat, isn't it? Um, hi everyone. No, we haven't quite started yet, Georgina. Don't worry. Um, thanks, John, for the congrats on a thousand subscribers. That's it. That feels quite good, considering up until this month, I very rarely remembered to post anything to YouTube. That's gone all right, hasn't it? Um, I'm excited. Today's chapter. I've read it to El Hasbandito, Tom, and um, he's uh, he says it's a good one. So. That's good. And it's lovely seeing people say yesterday's was their favourite chapter. It's, it's That's really nice. So we'll see how you get on with today. Um, it was a little bit easier writing today now that I know Fiona is Welsh. I've sort of tried to write it with that in mind to see if it helps me doing the accent. Um, hello to Cambridge. Oh, very nice. Oh, Cambridge is lovely. It's one of my favourite places to gig. Um, that'll be a gig I'm looking forward to when we're back live. Uh, will be Combaton Village College, one of my very favourite gigs in the entire world. Um, yeah, right. Um, right, should we do this chapter then? Day eight, that's where we are. Sorry, I phased out for a second then. I was looking at John's comment there that says El Husbandito. It's, I, it's an old joke I used to have um, where I'd say, I call my husband the husbandit because he stole my heart. And then I'd be like, we're awful, don't invite us around for dinner fun um so oh you went to custard comedy okay right laura just do this the chapter yay so they are in the spa they've been moved to the chill out room um fiona has revealed that she's having an affair let's see what happens next Emma sipped at her Prosecco and looked at Fiona's miserable face. For a heart-stopping second, she contemplated telling Fiona the truth about why she had moved to Bath, but even running the words over in her mind made her bowels turn to cold milkshake. You really don't know anyone else in Bath? Fiona asked. Uh, is that right? Yeah, this is the beginning of the chapter. Suddenly they're like, oh no, is that not right? Yeah, this is right. Um, you really don't know anyone else in Bath? Fiona asked. Something in her eyes was searching Emma's face for solace. Emma winced. Well, my old company has an office here, so I know a few people that I'd had contact with. I wouldn't say I had friends. I don't even know their numbers, but if I went into the office and introduced myself, clearly, then they would remember who I was. Her voice bouncing off the marble and stone of the spa walls sounded pathetic. Emma listened to the words spilling out and felt so stupid and alone all of a sudden. She saw a vision of herself packing up her flat and bundling everything into a van to move back to London. Jack would be standing at the top of his staircase looking relieved that the nutter below was going and he could get a decent housemate for the building. She'd be racing back along the M4 with her tail between her legs to sink into a different but equally mind-numbing job in a different but equally life-numbing company. Her parents would have her round for lunch one Sunday a month and her dad would ruffle her hair and say he had missed her, while her mum would say she was very proud of her for trying to be independent, but maybe Bath was a bit far and should she perhaps have tried Chiswick first? Then Emma, full of carbohydrates and milky tea, would traipse back on the underground to a new flat that smelt, that felt small, didn't smell small, I don't know how something smells small. It smelt small and sminky. It felt small and dingy compared to the high ceiling elegance of Bath. It was a miserable little daydream, even by her standards, but probably one of her more accurate runs. Back in the real world, Fiona was topping up their glasses and sighing to herself, his name is Norman. I think that's the thing I'm most embarrassed about after the fact that I'm having an affair. Who has an affair with a man called Norman? Honestly. The Prosecco in the cosy warmth of the heated chair beneath them was really loosening Fiona's tongue. 
Emma was pleased. There was something ever so comforting about watching Fiona spill her real thoughts out between them. People who have affairs are supposed to look mean. They're meant to be really wicked and heartless. In my defence, I didn't know he was married when I first met him, see? We went on a few dates before he told me, and I really liked him, and, and obviously, well, he's loaded, so I just, I loved being spoiled too, I suppose. Then after a month or so, when he couldn't keep dodging my questions about why I couldn't go to his and stuff, he told me he was married. I didn't talk to him for two weeks, I was mortified. But then, oh God, it's so cliched when I hear it out loud. He called me up, he did. He said things were over with his wife. He said that they were just going through the motions while he got up the courage and, and the legal protection to leave with his money. I believed him. I felt so flattered by him trying to win me back so desperately. Emma wondered if the chaise long nature of the seats was helping Fiona talk. It was just like being at a therapist's, but with wine and in a bikini. Or maybe some therapists did offer that. She was almost certain she needed a therapist, so maybe seeking one out who offered wine in a more relaxed atmosphere was a good idea. It would be a minefield to Google, though, without finding some absolute rascals, she mused, before forcing her mind back to focusing on Fiona. They did break up. Oh, that was the most wonderful month of my life. She found out about me, see. That night wasn't wonderful, it was awful. She turned up at my house, ranting and screaming, and he had to come and tear her away. I felt bad for her, but then I also sort of didn't. Fiona sounded almost wistful. She was there in the front garden with her perfect hair and face and figure and life and house and career and dogs, and she was spitting teeth at me. I remember standing in that front window looking at her, thinking, you have everything. Can't you just let me have him? He isn't even that great, but he's something. He moved in with me for a bit after that. It was like having a proper boyfriend. I've never lived with a partner before, have you? Emma opened her mouth to answer, but was saved the difficulty of replying by Fiona continuing regardless. After a couple of weeks, he, though, he got a hotel room. Um... After a couple of weeks, though, he got a hotel room. Said he felt awkward being in my house surrounded by my stuff without his own space. I was a bit upset, but we said maybe we could think about getting a place together once the dust had settled. And he moved into a hotel. Then next thing I know, he's telling me he has to go back to her. She's not coping, got on the drink and begging him. And he feels like he owes it to her to give it another shot. I was gutted. I had another two weeks of not talking to him, but then... I don't know. I missed having the company. I don't find it easy to make friends. You don't say, thought Emma, raising her mind's eyebrow. You have barely managed to say three words to me in ten days of working together, and now you're spilling your entire life story to me due to half a glass of spikling wine. You have nearly as much social skill as me. In a way, Emma quite liked that Fiona was clearly unhinged and sad like she was. Emma thought back over exchanges they'd had in the shop where Fiona had been snappy and curt. Now she overlaid Snippy's response, Snip Fiona's snippy responses, not Snippy's responses, Fiona's snippy responses with an imagined internal verbal diarrhea that Fiona could only keep at bay by being very cold. It worked. So I crawled back, didn't I? Well, I mean, I more sort of stood still and let him crawl to me, but I let him back in. Only this time we have to be so careful in case she even gets a sniff. It's it's not fun anymore at all. Fiona looked like she might cry, but I'm too scared to end it and be alone. Emma wanted to hug Fiona, but the heat and Prosecco had combined with a lifetime's worth of memories of her being socially excruciating, and she didn't trust herself to stand up. I'm pathetic said Fiona, a stupid middle-aged woman who'd rather be a sad mistress than alone, a sad middle-aged shop manager with bad hair. Emma quite liked Fiona's hair. She opened her mouth to say so, but different words came out. I moved to Bath because there was a guy in my office that I had a crush on and he got a transfer here, so I just moved here. I didn't even try and get a transfer in case it didn't work or took too long. I just quit the day I found out he'd gone and moved here. Ha! He has no idea. Probably doesn't even remember who I am. But I quit my job, a nice flat, and everyone I knew and moved here because of an office crush. Well, that was quite a lot more than just telling her she has nice hair, Emma thought numbly. Fiona stared with her mouth actually open like a cartoon. 
Really? She wheezed. No, you didn't. That's why you're here. You're crazy. Emma laughed. Despite the scooped out feeling she had from telling the truth, she felt oddly flamboyant about it. It was crazy, but she had said it out loud and the world hadn't ended. She hadn't expelled the truth and folded down like damp cardboard. No one had arrested her. She told the truth to a woman doing something equally balmy and they were now just here, the two of them, hanging out in a spa, being utterly unstable with their lives. Well, aren't we a pair, said Fiona wondrously. I was so jealous of you. I thought you were this ethereal free spirit who'd... Emma snorted. Ethereal free spirit? Her? Oh, good God, no, she chuckled. Clumsy stalker is more me at the moment. You were always in a daze and so dreamy. I thought you were really cool. I didn't realise you were scheming how best to trip over your love interest in the street and start a life with him. Fiona's eyes were no longer brimming with tears. She was smiling and looked less rigid against the chair. This was nice, Emma realised. This must be what having a friend was like. I was in shock, I think, Emma said, and had she had a glass more of wine, she might have admitted to Fiona that she'd hurt her ribs squatting behind a reversing car spying on Theo. She didn't, though, perhaps. If this friendship continued to blossom, she would, have to, she would save that anecdote to cheer Fiona up on another disastrous occasion. Fiona poured the remainder of the bottle into their flutes and they drank them, continuing to chat companionably. Emma hadn't felt this cosy or content in a long, long time. As they both began to shift a little, knowing it was time to leave, but not wanting to break the delightful spell, Emma plucked up her courage again. So, do you think you might leave him now? You don't want to go through this again, do you? Fiona thought for a moment. I could do. It's scary, though. Yeah, Emma agreed, wondering if she'd have the confidence to do it if the boot was on the other foot. How about, said Fiona, we make a deal? I'll end it with Norman. Emma liked the sound of that. If you make contact with your man Theo. Emma dropped her flute instantly. Luckily, the spa were well prepared and the plastic flute just bounced across the marble floor instead of shattering into a thousand foot-shredding pieces. Emma flinched, sending a shooting pain through her ribs. She desperately didn't want to make contact with Theo. Not yet. She wasn't ready. But when will you be ready, she asked herself. When I'm six foot one and very slim and rich with perfect hair, came the outraged reply. Outraged reply. Obviously. No, she desperately didn't want to make contact with Theo. But on the other hand, she looked at Fiona, who was mopping up the little puddle of Prosecco and retrieving Emma's flute. If that was the push Fiona needed to stop seeing Norman, maybe that was best for her friend. Emma realised she had a friend. It had been a long time since she had thought that. End of chapter. So, my question to you guys for the end of the chapter. You overwhelmingly wanted her to come clean with Fiona in the spa. Done. Um, my question for you is, does Emma say yes to Fiona's deal? So it's a yes or no. Uh, does Emma say yes to Fiona's deal, where if Fiona leaves Norman, she will... Um, uh, make contact with Theo that's your first one so one yes two no then because I thought it was boring to have two yes or no questions the two days in a row um you can also choose an object to feature in the next chapter so please also pick uh either a telescope a pomegranate a unicycle or three shoes those are your options <laughs> Okay, so does Emma say yes to Fiona's deal? One yes, two no. Choose an object to feature in the next chapter. One, a telescope, two, a pomegranate, three, a unicycle, or four, three shoes. So up to you on those. I'll post them in the description of the video. If you vote under the video, if you're catching up watching this not in the live stream, that's fine. You're still so, so welcome to vote. Um, so uh, you have until about um, about one o'clock tomorrow. I normally start writing just after lunch slash breakfast, depending on what time I've got up. So like the video, do all the whatever you want to do. I, yeah, but thank you very much for coming. This has been fun. It'll be 10 o'clock tomorrow and then it'll be eight o'clock on Friday. So 10 o'clock tomorrow, eight o'clock Friday. 
um, I'll get the video ready. So have a lovely evening and day if you're watching this in the morning where you are. Thanks for coming back again and see you tomorrow. Bye.